Dr. David Gelman, and this is your orientation film for Station 13 of the Dharma Initiative. Station 13, or the Oscillator, is a laboratory in which important experiments are being conducted in the area of tone science, the study of vibrations and their effect on the mind, body, and matter. It is known that certain vibrations along the sound and light spectrum can evoke feelings of pleasure, fear, sorrow, excitement, and such physical sensations as pain, dizziness, heart rate fluctuations, and most interestingly, weightlessness. Using tones precisely timed to overlap in a concentrated area of physical space coincided with syncopated pulses of light spanning the color and ultraviolet spectrum, we have achieved a harmonic convergence of sorts in this Dharma station and something that we believe to be unique to the world of science, anti-gravity without electromagnetism. Test subjects during intense sessions have been reduced to zero mass at the height of vibration bombardment. The effects of these experiments are not permanent and all subjects return to their original weight by the end of the session. precisely how the island is moved. In reality, it doesn't move at all. It only ceases to exist for a period of time. As the Earth spins on its axis near 1,000 miles an hour, the island is displaced from its former location by a process that temporarily cancels out its entire mass and everything on it, and then reappears in its proper place in our space-time continuum. Using a sensitive high-frequency vibration monitor to find the island after it is moved, the lamppost station charts the length of time this oscillation occurs then calculates the new position of the island along an imaginary arc taking into account the curved shape of the Earth, the exact speed of its rotation, as charted along its path on the line of latitude it follows. Though our knowledge of people on this island dates back only a couple hundred years, the stories of this island echo stories of another mysterious island from the past one in which its inhabitants also plundered the fruits of paradise and exploited its special qualities for power, greed, and wealth. We cannot follow that same path as the inhabitants of Atlantis, or we will suffer the same consequences. As science labors on in its quest for the ultimate answers about the origins of the universe, we constantly discover new theories that create the possibilities to rethink all we know about history. Man thought the Earth was flat and then discovered it was round. He thought the sun revolved around the Earth, and then realized the Earth actually revolved around the Sun. At any time in history, we only accepted as truth what the current instruments of science could prove, and only believe the theories of what well-connected society nobles and scholars agreed should be taken as fact and printed in books. The same is true for quantum mechanics. First, man thought a cell was the smallest particle, and then an atom, and then further discoveries of protons, neutrons, and electrons, which are known as subatomic particles, and then quarks, and the new idea of superstrings, one must start to admit that we have an ever-evolving idea of what the universe is, how it came to be, and what lies ahead in its future. With advances in this tone science, the cancellation of the mass of an object and the manipulation of its place in our dimension of existence is a cause of great hope for us. Early on in the Dharma Initiative, our scientists were not satisfied with the Big Bang Theory, and the lack of a unified field theory made them all that more skeptical of what science had come up with so far. How could all of the matter in the universe already exist? It couldn't have. They began to theorize that the Big Bang was not the beginning of the universe, but actually the third part of a three-part process. They proposed this. In the beginning, there was nothing. But even nothing stretching out into infinity in every direction is something. In this empty vacuum of space, the first true miracle occurred. A sound. A simple vibration. From the necessity to be, to exist, this simple vibration caused the first fluctuation in this nothingness, which began to grow in intensity and power. The detection of this hum is still evident in space today. Eventually this noise began to shake and vibrate the universe so violently it became so dense with waves, this energy morphed into something else, the superstrings. As these waves of energy split into tiny pieces and changed to loops, 
They began to vibrate at different rates of speed and take on different shapes, which defined what type of quark they would eventually become. And then with the other particles in this cosmic soup, to then form the first atoms. These atoms eventually began to clump together and gravitate towards each other. Eventually, one spot began to emerge as the center or most dense spot in this early universe and began to draw in the rest of the existing universe to its center. After pulling everything in like a black hole and condensing and heating itself to an unimaginable point, it then and only then exploded into what we now call the Big Bang. Our scientists were satisfied with this idea and began to base their experiments on reverse engineering this process. One might ask where that original sound or vibration came from. Our only answer would be that it came from nowhere. Eventually, using powerful instruments developed in our lab, experiments were conducted focusing these strong vibrations on matter, ultimately altering the oscillations and vibrations of these strings, which at their core define them as matter or energy, and rendering the mass of the existing atoms as weightless. With your help, we will better understand these forces and be able to maintain the zero mass state of an object or person in time space, and be able to manipulate its location. The extreme urgency for positive results in this lab is also why this is the most hidden and secretive of all Dharma stations. The island, in addition to having extraordinary properties which cannot be explained by science, is also a prison of sorts. It is a prison to an entity like no other, trapped in a confined, subservient state where it can only manifest itself in the form of a man, a ghost, or a cloud of thick black smoke. This creature, or evil incarnate as it has been called, is the embodiment of evil here on earth. It will remain in this purgatory until it can find a way to escape it, or until it can be extinguished. Isn't that the ultimate goal of humans caught eternally in this everlasting spoof, to overcome evil once and for all? We have the chance to achieve this. We know it cannot penetrate certain fields of subsonic resonant frequencies. We believe that it can be contained and bombarded with the right combination of vibrations that can be disengaged. Should this entity change state or somehow find a way to get off the island, the results would be catastrophic the equivalent of unleashing an antichrist on the world. This is why it is so important this station must succeed in its objectives. Must proceed as planned where many others may fail, be abandoned, or be destroyed. This station must carry on. With your help and dedication to the initiative in this station, we may one day harness and control the power of the same energy that created the universe and destroy the only force that has ever tried to tear it apart. Thank you, and good luck. Oh, turn it off!